please forgive me if I stutter, hesitate, or mispronounce anything while reading this work. This is part one of chapter two. Trigger warnings for this chapter, panic attacks and death. Wilbur did not know what to make of the visitor, the traveler, whatever he was. Father had come down to the garden with him and Wilbur could tell he was sad. He didn't know if the visitor had been the cause or something else, someone else. A formal introduction is in order, Father told Wilbur and Tommy. This is Technoblade, an old friend. He'll be tutoring you for a while, Wilbur. Wilbur had stared up at the man, seeing him in the soft morning light at last. Technoblade. Tommy was right. It was a pretty dumb name, and one Wilbur had heard before, though he wasn't sure where. He was tall and lean, and most likely a few years older than Wilbur. He was dressed like him, too, with poofy sleeves that Tommy always said made him look like an old man. An emerald earring hung from Technoblade's left ear, similar to the one that Father wore on a golden chain around his neck, tucked secretively under the dress shirt. Under his dress shirt. Was he some sort of royalty, too, then? Some foreign prince or a distant cousin that Father never bothered to tell Wilbur about? Father kept many secrets. This may just be one of a million. Technoblade had taken one look at Wilbur, nodded, and then said, We'll start at dawn, before leaving then. Wilbur had stared after him, perplexed. What? Father had struggled to keep a smile on his face. That's techno for you. Now they were sitting in the dining hall, each to their own thoughts, except Tommy, whose thoughts must always come out of his mouth, regardless of who or who wasn't listening. And Wilbur tripped me when I got up very quickly. And you saw, didn't you, Dad? Dad, didn't you? I saw, I saw, Father said distractedly. He was staring down at his half-eaten plate as if it held the secrets of the universe. Wilbur assumed he was only doing it so he wouldn't be staring at Mother's empty seat. She had been taking more and more of her meals in her bedroom. Tommy hadn't noticed yet, but Wilbur did. Wilbur always did. And this techno fellow, he's a bit of an odd one, isn't he? Will he be training me too? Will I have to wake up at dawn like Wilbur? Wilbur grimaced. Please don't remind me, Tommy. Tommy stuck his tongue out at him from across the table. It's not like you have any other plans. I'm sure you'll be just staying up reading again, he gestured dramatically to himself. I, for one, would love to be under the tutelage of Mr. Technoblade, stupid as his name may be. The two of them turned to their father, one with starry-eyed expectation, the other with morbid curiosity. Father sighed fondly before ruffling Tommy's hair. Sorry, little bud. Maybe we can find someone else for you. I'm sure the captain would be willing to. But I want the blade, Tommy whined. Wilbur snorted. Yeah, as if you could even wake up early enough. You'll still be in bed by noon. I can see it now. Father gave Wilbur a cheeky grin he only reserved for his eldest son. Tell you what, Tommy, if you can wake up with Wilbur, then you can watch him train with Techno. Truly? Tommy kicked back from the table, nearly upsetting Father's glass of wine. Good night, then. Early to bed, early to prize, as they always say. Who says that, Wilbur said. But Tommy had already gone off, leaving Wilbur with their father and the silence. For a while, the only sound were utensils scraping against plates and Wilbur's heartbeat in his ears. He would never admit it to Tommy or anyone, but his relationship with father was always better with his brother around. It wasn't that Wilbur didn't love his father, or that he thought his father didn't love him. Wilbur couldn't remember it happening, but somewhere along the way of studying warfare and politics, of staring up at the throne that would one day be his, of learning how to be a prince, he'd forgotten how to be a son. And sometimes, when father thought he couldn't see, father would look at him with a bottomless grief, like he was mourning something already lost. It should be Tommy, Wilbur had thought. Sonny Tommy, who managed to charm everyone he met, in spite of, or perhaps because of, his loud disposition. Not him, not when father looked at him like that. Wilbur swallowed the last of his dinner and was set to go, if not for his father speaking once more. Wilbur. Yes, father. Father leaned against his hand as he considered Wilbur. Do you want me to be there for you tomorrow? Wilbur scoffed half-heartedly. I'm not a child, father. Of course, father said, but Technoblade is still a stranger to you. Wilbur pursed his lips as he thought about his father's words. Do you trust him? Yes, father replied at once. 
Wilbur nodded. Then I trust him. Father stared at him with a, for a long minute and then nodded. There was nothing else to say, it seemed, and so Wilbur left, leaving his father to the quiet. Tommy's door was firmly shut by the time Wilbur arrived at their sleeping quarters. Wilbur's own door stood ajar, waiting. Moonlight spilled from the arched windows, painting everything in silver, the bed littered with half-finished books, and the desk bearing scars from Wilbur's manifold frustrations and writing music for the guitar that sat discarded on the floor. Mother had given him that guitar for his tenth birthday. He used to play lullabies, or spooky songs, when he was in the mood for older brother mischief. For Tommy. Before Tommy decided he was a big man and moved out to the bedroom across the hall. His body felt heavy with thoughts. Technoblade, the boy who looked not much older than him, now tasked at tutoring him at, at what? Father had not been forthcoming with that, amongst other things. With a sigh, Wilbur grabbed the guitar from the floor and dragged it with him to the window. As he plucked idly at the strings, he gazed out at the horizon beyond the glass. The sprawling lawns of the castle, ending at the foreboding gates, and then after that, his kingdom, his birthright. He played a single discordant chord. Nothing had come easily to him recently. Music, literature, conversation, everything all, all at once had become taxing. Even laughing with his brother felt like a chore. Wilbur's fingers stilled on what was undoubtedly going to be another bad note. Something was moving, down on the lawn. He squinted at the figure until it came into sharp focus. Technoblade. Wilbur pressed his face closer to the glass, just to make sure his eyes had not deceived him. There were many people in the kingdom with pink hair, but perhaps fewer who had moved with the lethal grace of a python. Technoblade walked across the lawn and disappeared past the gates without a glance back. It wasn't until his breath fogged up the window completely that Wilbur realized he was hyperventilating. He pulled away from the glass and stumbled over the guitar on the way to his bed. He pulled the covers over himself, as if the darkness would dampen his thoughts. Where is he going? Followed by, will he come back? Will he come back? Will he come back? Will he? You're late. Wilbur blinked in the dim sunlight, barely breaking through the horizon. What? He blinked some more until he finally recognized his surroundings, the smooth marble floor, the four columns sculpted like gods bearing up the flat roof, ivy falling over the roof's edge like a waterfall, curtains curtaining them off from the rest of the garden. This was the training pavilion, father's personal training area, where he attempted to teach Wilbur fencing before it became clear that weaponry was not Wilbur's forte. It's all right, son, father had said carefully tending to the cut on Wilbur's leg from his own rap rapier. Kings don't really need to know how to fight. That's what armies are for. Father had s sounded angry as he said this, but Wilbur somehow knew it wasn't because of him. But you know how, Wilbur had pouted, dutifully trying to hold back tears as father applied stinging herbs to his wound. Well, said father, that's different. Different how? Just different father finished tying the bandages around Wilbur's leg and smiled at him. I'll tell you when you're older. He never had. But it wasn't father standing before Wilbur today. Well, Technoblade said, gesturing to the heavy chest in the corner. We're burning daylight here, little prince. Hurry up. Wilbur blinked again. Sorry, but how did I? Technoblade stared at him quietly as they both waited for Wilbur to finish his sentence. His eyes are red, Wilbur noted distantly, even as he struggled to remember every anything else. He could not recall falling asleep, or waking up, or walking down to meet his new tutor for their first lesson. Well, Technoblade prodded. Wilbur shook his head. Nothing, nothing. What are we, um, learning today? Technoblade cocked his head to the side, unimpressed. His hair had been pulled into a braid so tight that it hurt Wilbur's scalp to pro by proxy. Bilza said you were bad at fencing. Wilbur grimaced as he walked over to the chest, kneeling to filter through the contents. That's one way of saying it. He picked up one of the swords and turned to Technoblade, who apparently brought his own weapon, a wicked-looking broadsword with a ruby encrusted in a hilt. I'm a bit better at long-ranged weapons, if you're wondering. I wasn't, Technoblade snorted. Get into position. Wilbur did. That's not correct. Wilbur sighed. I told you. 
Technoblade walked closer to Wilbur until they were eye to eye. Wilbur was a few inches taller than him, he realized, at least until Technoblade knocked him flat on his back with a sudden blow to the stomach. The air left Wilbur's lungs in a rush. He blinked lazily up at the ceiling for a moment before the ignition set in. He leaned himself against his elbows and glared at his tutor, who was looking more and more unimpressed. You could have withstood that if you were in the correct position, Technoblade drawled. You could have warned me, Wilbur spat, clamoring to his feet. Oh, is that how the fight goes, your highness? Technoblade mocked. All right, then, if it pleases you, your princeliness, I shall be striking your shoulder with the flat of my blade next. What? Quicker than a breath, Technoblade did just that. Wilbur landed on his side, his own weapon flying out of his hands. Technoblade laughed with a real warmth. I even warned you that time, and I still knocked you over. Goodness, you're pathetic. Wilbur wanted to say, I'm calling my father, but caught himself before he could give that ammunition to the smug man. Instead, he got shakily to his feet, his entire body smarting from the impact with the floor, and picked the rapier up from the ground. He got into position again. Technoblade raised one eyebrow. This would go faster if you had told me what was wrong with it, Wilbur grumbled. This would go even faster if you weren't, if you didn't fumble your basics, Technoblade retorted. Shut up. Strong demands from a boy who can't even get his left foot placed properly. Wilbur considered the words. He moved his left foot an inch by inch, watching Technoblade until the man finally gave a court nod. Wilbur sighed. See, that wasn't... Oh my gods! Wilbur barely had time to throw up his rapier before Technoblade crashed his sword against it. S Steel hissed. Wilbur's knees buckled under Technoblade's surprising strength. It felt like having an entire house collapse on him, and if he fell, he'd be crushed. Technoblade fell back, leaving Wilbur with his heart hammering in his chest. What was that? Wilbur demanded. You could have killed me that time. I could have killed you multiple times since you first walked in here. Technoblade gestured for him to get into position. Again, again, again. Never let your guard down, your highness. Always assume the enemy is planning to strike. What even is the point of this? Wilbur asked. The kingdom has been at peace for gods knows how long. I don't need to risk my neck for a skill that doesn't even matter. Technoblade considered him for a long moment, the silence between them only broken by the beginnings of a bird song at the rest of the world finally began to wake. And what will you do when it does matter? Technoblade asked. It never will. But let's say it will, Technoblade interrupted, taking a step towards Wilbur, his red eyes never once leaving the prince's face. Let's say, hypothetically, that a foreign army attacks at the very at this very moment. Your father isn't here to help. Nobody's here to help. It's just you. Do you just stand there and get to torn apart by the mob? Will you run like a coward and leave your kingdom to the wolves? Wilbur flinched. That's not. Or not even an army. Consider, if you will, just one very smart, very angry person, and they've got your brother, Technoblade smirked, at which whatever expression was on Wilbur's face. That's all it takes, you know, to kill a kingdom, a single person who knows your weak spots. So what you need to do is to get rid of them, the weak spots, I mean... This kingdom is only impenetrable because Filza has long ago gotten rid of every vulnerability. So what happens when you take the throne? That's not true, Wilbur said quietly, standing in the downpour of Technoblade's words. My father, he does have vulnerabilities. He has mother, Tommy, me. But he has the power to protect them, Technoblade replied, and you don't. That's the difference. The sun had climbed higher in the, into the sky painting everything in gold. Through the gaps in the ivory, the warm light shone on Wilbur's skin, warming him from the inside out. He imagined the light sweeping into his skin, into his bones, into the cracks of his soul until he could be made whole again. A boy of sunlight, like Tommy. He wanted the sun to burn away the tiredness, the sadness, the thoughts. He wanted the sun to burn Technoblade, too, with his harsh words made harsher by the truth. Wilbur sh took a shaky breath, letting the fresh air in and trapping it in his lungs for as long as he could. Then he let it out. He glared at Technoblade, then got into position. Fine, he spat. Do your worst. Willoughby, you look like trash, Tommy said brightly over a p plate of eggs. Tommy, father scolded. No, no, Technoblade mumbled through a mouthful of meat. The boy is right, Phil. Willoughby does look like trash. Wilbur groaned at their remarks and then groaned some more when the movements made his ribs feel like they were cracking apart. 
bruises were already starting to form up and down his arms from the various times Technoblade had knocked him into the floor. He couldn't even reach for his utensils without pain lacing up his side, and so his breakfast remained tantalizingly out of reach right in front of him. Tommy's initial annoyance at sleeping in and missing the blade in action was only matched by his absolute delight at seeing his older brother so battered, and then exceeded by his excitement when Father invited Technoblade for breakfast to recount how terribly Wilbur had performed. It was to track his progress, or some sort of excuse like that, though Wilbur guessed Father just wanted to stop Technoblade from disappearing wherever he goes off to, like the last night. Did he cry? Tommy demanded, practically vibrating off his chair. Technoblade, seated next to him, cut another piece of meat and chewed ponderously on it before answering. Almost. Wicked! Tommy breathed. Father glanced at Wilbur worriedly, taking in his bruises. Techno, maybe next time you can go easy a bit? No, Wilbur said hurriedly, wincing when his sore limbs protested. No, I told him not to hold back. Father raised an eyebrow. I doubt that. No, really. I need this, father, Wilbur insisted. His legs felt like lead, and some of his bones were definitely misplaced, and by the end of their five-hour session, he learned where to strike to kill and where to strike to inca incapacitate, how to block attacks as much as deal them, and how to fight off stronger opponents. Which for you would be all of them, Technoblade had said as he righted Wilbur's grip on his rapier. Let the boy bruise a little, Phil, Technoblade said now downing a glass of wine. It's good practice. Good distraction, too. Distraction? Wilbur looked at his father, but he was busy trying to force a bowl of vegetables on Tommy. When he looked again, Wilbur found himself meeting eyes with Technoblade. The other boy was considering him at length. Wilbur had caught sight of that expression multiple times in the past five hours, like Technoblade was inspecting him, less with the scrutiny of a teacher and more with the intense focus of a surgeon trying not to make the wrong cut. What? Te Wilbur finally asked. Do I have something on my face? Yes, defeat. Wilbur resisted the urge to stick his tongue out, like Tommy undoubtedly would have done. You are a very rude guest. You are a very weak prince. I don't see what my physical prowess, or lack thereof, Technoblade inserted, has to do with you being such a pissy jerk, Wilbur finished for hotly. Wilbur, father said, swiveling to face his oldest son. Cursing? In front of your baby brother, I taught you better manners than that. I am not a baby, Tommy protested. And what does piss? I think that's my cue to go, Technoblade interrupted suddenly, rising from his seat. To where, father asked. None of your business, actually, Technoblade replied, not flippantly or arrogantly, just stating a fact. Father's grip tightened infinite simile on his spoon. I think it is my business if you're living in my castle, Technoblade shrugged. Try to stop me, then. They stared each other down, the king and his visitor, red eyes on blue. A moment passed, then another. Father did not move. That's what I thought, Technoblade scoffed, and then disappeared in a whirl of fur and scarlet silk. Wilbur glanced at Father, trying to gauge his reaction. Father had never seemed truly old, but in that moment it felt like Wilbur was watching him age a thousand years per second. Who was he really, Wilbur asked, before he could lose the nerve. Father blinked slowly, as if coming out of a dream. An old friend, I told you. From when? He can't be that old of a friend. He's just a teenager. When did you meet him? Wilbur repeated. Father pursed and unpursed his lips like he was trying to swallow something rancid. Why does it matter, Wilbur? Because you look at him like you look at me, and I don't know what to make of that. Father's gaze pinned Wilbur to his seat, even more than the soreness of his body did. Even Tommy had fallen quiet, sensing in the same way the younger siblings do, that his brother was in the sort of trouble that required absolute silence. And how do I look at you, Will? Father asked. Like I disappoint you. Like I did something to hurt you when you're sad. I can't remember what. It doesn't matter, Wilbur mustered, who was left of his strength and rose from his seat. My other non-violent tutors are waiting, if you'll excuse me, Father. Tommy? Tommy stared back, wide-eyed. Father only sighed. It's a long story, Wilbur, he said. With an infinite patience, Wilbur could have preferred if he screamed. And not one you're ready to hear, either of you, he added, giving Tommy a reassuring smile. But one day I'll... Sure, Wilbur turned for them, then began to walk away. One day, whenever that is. He expected a rebuttal, or perhaps wanted one, but as always, there was nothing left to say.